I'm Sally Horrocks and I'm the Senior Academic Advisor to the Oral History of British Science Project uh, on secondment from the University of Leicester. Historians of science have been more reluctant than, say, social and cultural historians to engage with oral history. And so they've missed the opportunity, really, to enrich the documentary sources and material sources that they've tended to rely on with the actual accounts of scientists themselves. And this has left history of science in often slightly depersonalised, especially for the 20th century, where we don't have the volume of letters uh, and personal correspondence that we have for 19th century scientists like Darwin or Lord Kelvin, for example. Historians of science are sometimes uneasy with what they call the great men approach to history of science, which is something that an oral history project like ours could be accused of adopting because we have interviewed primarily men uh, and we have often chosen people who were very eminent within the scientific community. But for many of the projects, uh, the people we've been actually been able to interview were the junior people on those projects because they were the younger people and they're still available for interview. So they're not the people who were most well no associated with these projects, but they sometimes feel they're speaking for the whole team of people who were involved in that project. And so we have that kind of cross section across the scientific community, including people who started off very junior, who ended up uh, very eminent and very senior later on in their careers. Oral history allows us to actually get inside the lab almost in real time and get scientists to tell us about what they actually did when they were doing their work, how they interacted with their colleagues, uh, how they maybe didn't get on with their colleagues, how, how personalities were involved in science, how teams worked, uh, how those teams interacted with the people who managed them, uh, with the funding structures. So it gives us a window onto the bigger issues in history of science, as well as uh, making uh, giving us an insight into how individuals reacted within those structures. The oral history material that we've collected through the project really enriches our picture of post-war British science. It puts people back in, particularly into big government-funded or industry-funded research projects, which tend to be quite anonymous. So people know about the Harrier jump jet, but they don't know about the people who designed and built it. I think that's our main contribution, is to kind of put those people back in. But also through those people we've shed a lot of light on big issues that historians of science might already have written about but haven't had those personal insights into uh, the detail of the processes that were involved. Scientists seem to be very good at remembering particularly the details of their technical work uh, and I'm very impressed by the level of detail that people can tell us for example about the development of the first stored program computer at Manchester University in the 1940s. So that's a, a very long uh, memory. Some of them worry about their involvement in this project because they don't think their memories are as good as they used to be but once they get involved uh, the life story approach helps construct those memories in a way that they find they're comfortable with and is coherent and gives us a huge amount of really important detail, not just about the things that we chose to interview them for, but also the whole of the rest of their working lives. This project has made a really important contribution to understanding the role of women in, in British science in the years since the Second World War partly through interviews with women themselves, but also through asking male scientists about the women they worked with and the gender division of labour in their workplace environments. And often what men tell us about the women they worked with is actually much more interesting to someone whose research interests are in gender and science than actually the interviews with the women who uh, give us a very different perspective from that of the men that they worked with. This project, I think, has really brought home to me how computing has changed science um, since the 1940s, that we have many, many interviews where people talk about how their working lives were utterly transformed by the advent of computers and how whole groups of scientific workers disappeared because we now had a machine that could do computing rather than computing being done by people. And I think, think that, for me, is one of the strongest things. And the changing other pieces of equipment within the laboratory as well. The, the whole kind of instrumentation side of it, I think, has really struck home to me much more than it had before.